See, in the very beginning of time, God created the heavens and the earth, and he created man and woman to have dominion over all of it. And then he was walking in the garden. He made it a place for them to be and to live with him in, in this garden of Eden. And he gave them a choice to love him or to disobey him. But while they were in this garden, they would be able to walk with him and feel complete and feel whole because they were made in the image of God, whole and new, and it was beautiful. But we had that choice to love or disobey, and we chose to disobey after we were tempted by the serpent. And after we disobeyed God, we were cast out of the garden, and we were no longer be able to be with him, be whole with God. So we have now this God-sized hole in our heart because we were once complete and made in him, and then now we disobeyed him and we're longing for this for this completeness because God truly completes us but they, that's why God sent his one and only son to be with us to die on a cross and to fill that hole but if we don't believe in that then we'll look to all these different earthly things. I know in my life, I look to all these, I look to pornography and I look to friends and I look to sports and I look to all these different things. If I have to be the best, I have to be the greatest, I have to, this will fill my desires, all these different things. But all of it left me less complete than I did to begin with. I'd manipulate girlfriends or I'd manipulate sports just to try to fit it just right into this hole to feel completely perfect. But as soon as I got what I was wanting or got what I desired or I met this need that I thought I needed, I felt empty still. I felt incomplete. I felt weird. I, did, I just didn't feel right. But see, that's how God, like God put us in this earth and he is the only thing that can satisfy our every need. He's the only person that can quench our thirst. It take, there's a Psalm that says, as a deer longs for water, so my soul longs for you, O oh God. As a deer longs for water, as you go throughout your day and you're just thirsty and that's the only thing you can think about is where am I getting my next drink of water? What, like, I cannot wait. It just feels so good after a hot day and just getting a nice cold drink of water. That's what I long for God. That's what he wants us to long for him. That's what he wants us to get our every need. As we go through our day and we have a drink of water, he wants us to always come to him and get a drink of water from him. Take the woman at the well, for example. And at this time, it's middle of the day in the middle of a desert in Samaria. Okay, and Jew, uh, Jesus being a Jew and the Samaritan, uh, Samaritan woman being a Samaritan, they did not like each other. The Jews thought the Samaritans were the lowest of the low and the grossest of the gross. But Jesus, being rich in mercy, love, and grace, was walking through Samaria at the middle of the day and comes across this woman at the well. And he sits down at the, at the well and he asks this woman, can I have a drink of water? And the woman is taken back because why is a Jew asking me a dirty, Samaritan woman for a drink of water and she's taken aback why do you why why do you want this like I I can't give you anything and Jesus looks at her and says if you only knew the water that I would give you you would be asking me for water because the water that I give you will thirst no more and the Samaritan woman is so surprised. Like, I want this water. I'm tired of having to walk out to the well, draw water, and carry it all the way back to the village. Like, I am so sick and tired of this. Give me this water so I don't have to keep on doing this. But Jesus responds to her and says, go and get your husband. And she says, I don't, have, I don't really have a husband. And he's like, you're right. You don't have a husband. You have... You've had five husbands, and the man that you're with right now isn't even your husband. See, this woman has been chasing after all these different, the men in her life and all these different things to satisfy her needs, to feel complete and feel whole and feel satisfied. But Jesus comes to her and says, stop chasing after these earthly things and chase after me. Because whenever you chase after me, you won't even want those things anymore because I am just so perfect and I am so good and I am so gracious. See, our God is so good, and he can't even be with sin, so he sent his son down. He sent his son down to be flesh and to die for us. He sent his son down to be sin, who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. 
a lot of times we can go through our lives and through our days and just wanting the next biggest and the next greatest and if I look at pornography then I'll just it will fill my desires and I'll feel like a man or I feel complete or I feel like a woman or whatever and it leaves you less and more empty than before or if you chase after this girlfriend or this boyfriend and they're not doing the right things and they're not saying the right things and they don't tell me that they love me enough and all these different things you're finding your hope and your identity in them and Jesus is like don't try to manipulate all those things to fit it just right in that God sized hole in your heart that only I can fit see this is not a condemning video at all it's very much of a hope video it's very much of a look that we have a God that wants us that forgives us for everything that we've already done for everything that we're doing and everything that we're going to do he d sent his son to die on a cross for us. He knitted us in our mother's womb and knew everything that we're gonna do and he loves us. He's made a great plan for our lives. We lack no good thing in him who loves us. He gives us strength and he gives us satisfaction in life because there is a lot of things that will pull you in this way, in this world that will pull you away from Jesus. But Jesus is like, I'm the only, I'm the bread of life. I am the water that you can drink from and be fully satisfied in. And you won't even want to drink from anything else. So man, this is a hope. Where does your hope lie? Is your hope in a boyfriend or a girlfriend or pornography or sports or GPA or making your parents happy? Or is your hope in the Lord who satisfies us in every single aspect of our life?